The Music Room is the world's leader in used hi-fi audio and a dealer for many of the best brands in the business. We've heard it all and we know what works. Greetings and welcome back fellow audio enthusiasts. It is I, Jason, your host of Two Channel Listening. And this review is due in thanks to my friends at the Music Room in Erie, Colorado. They lent me this wonderful pair of pre-owned Super HL5 Plus XDs. And this is part four, the crescendo of my Harbeth review. Now, I was a little bit ambivalent to accept the challenge to review the Super HL5s. Why is that? Well, you start to get into certain price categories. And as you know, I can get a little salty my attitude can get a little salty towards certain price points as they get higher and higher and what I feel is a diminished return on investment. And so I have to do this, I have to perform this cautious dance, mind you. Because what happens if I actually fall in love with the product? Can I equivocate to you, the viewers, my intentions while still giving the true fundamentals of how I think the product performs in my room. Now, I really shouldn't be stressing that much because after all, I'm not a member of the ASR Audio Science Review clan. I can actually be objective and enjoy myself while I'm reviewing the products. So, that's why this needs to be a conversation. This needs to be just an intimate conversation with you, my audience. There's this fork in the road that exists. On, on one side, you have the consumer who's only going to review the paper specs. They're going to look at those paper specs and they're going to make a snap judgment and they're going to make up their mind about what that, what the possible performance parameters are of said speaker and that's all there is to it. They'll have made up their mind. On the other hand, here's your specs. Here you go. Here are the Harbeth Super HL5s. Look at those specs closely, please. As you're looking at those specs, they're quite modest. For an $8,000 handmade speaker, you've got an 86 dB sensitivity. You've got a rather modest, a very modest roll off at 20 kilohertz for a speaker that's a three way with a super tweeter, really? And then there's the bottom roll off that starts at 40 hertz for the bass. I can think of another speaker that lines up so closely with the Harbeth Super HL5 Plus XD. Oh my God. You know what? If Alan Shaw and Elon Musk ever collaborated on a product together, it would be named something like the Diaphanous HL 98.6 Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Plus. It could happen. Let's hope not. Nevertheless, I digress. Back to my com the other speaker that I would compare spec for spec to the Super HL5s. The Ascend Acoustics Sierra 1s. Yes, the base model Sierra 1s. Snap, here you go. Here's the specs. Look at those carefully. What do you see? Power requirements, sensitivity, Low roll off, high roll off, 39 hertz, 22K, 22K hertz for the tweeter that's in that Sierra One. That's a $900 speaker, folks. Nearly one tenth of the cost of the Harbeth Super HL5. But I bring that speaker up specifically in comparison for a reason. Alan Shaw 
and David Fabricant are from the same cloth. They are engineering first designers. Both of them are students of the flat frequency curve. Both of them aspire to give you, the consumer, the flattest frequency curve they can come up with with their speakers at different price points, mind you. Now, again, when you look at those specs, I would also say that Mr. Dave, he has a five and a quarter inch mid woofer that is up a proprietary affair. Alan Shaw's eight inch radio is up a proprietary affair. When I reviewed those Sierra ones, I made the declarative statement back then early on that for its price, for the product quality, for the build quality, for the crossover parts quality, at that sub $1,000 category, that speaker has few peers. It is an amazing speaker for its price point and what it does. If you're of the ASR crowd, if you line matched both speakers at 80 dB playback in your room, wouldn't they sound nearly the same? Isn't, after all, isn't that why the frequency responses are supposed to be mapped out for that flat curve? I don't think anybody, and I can feel, I can feel your glares, I can feel your stares, I can feel your head nodding in a most negative fashion. Believe me, no one expects that five and a quarter inch woofer to give the impact that this eight, eight inch radial driver is going to give, even at that same rollout frequency. It's just, it's just a facts of physics, folks, come on. Okay, but what about my Compact 7s over there that I bought? Same eight inch radial driver, folks. Same cabinet materials. Crossovers are darn near similar, except for the fact that you have that Alan had to make up for a three-way design. As a matter of fact, even the knuckle wrap test in these cabinets are almost identical because of the dampening materials. Now, the obvious is that the Super HL has much more cabinet volume. It's a bigger speaker, and that's where that five, the additional five hertz roll off comes into play and gives you more. However, the strange thing, the, the tweeter roll off, here's the paper specs again for the Compact 7. Wait a minute, same 86 dB efficiency rating, same nominal six ohm load, huh? And a 20 kilohertz roll off for both tweeters and both speakers? Wait a minute. Come on, Mr. Alan Shaw, you had to have gained some efficiency because you've now got three drivers across that same type frequency range. You had to have gained some efficiency somewhere. Hmm. There's a lot of why going on here to why this speaker is more and why I feel this speaker gives you so much more. I was not prepared for how much more this Super 5's delivered in my room. As a matter of fact, it kind of pisses me off. Why would it piss me off? Because other than the difference of the three-way design and the cabinet volume, you open these speakers up and you can't see the why. You look at the crossovers, you're really not seeing the why. You look at the manufacturing properties and the, and the similarities, you're not getting the why. And then again, this eighth generation handmade in England speaker at $8,000. And so to start the context, let's just be honest with ourselves. The Chinese made JBL 4349s are $8,200. Did you hear me? The Chinese made JBLs are $8,200. Yes, they have a 12 inch woofer and yes, they play down to 32 Hertz. Okay. You're getting something there for that. But let's jump over to France. The Focal, the Canta number ones. Those are $8,000. It's a two way design. It's a six and a half inch woofer. 
and it starts to roll off at 42 hertz. The bass rolls off at 42 hertz. Hmm. You got the Dolly Epicon 2s, $8,000. Two-way design, six and a half inch woofer. Rolls off, bass starts rolling off at 47 hertz, folks. Now you're all gonna say, well, those are outrageously priced too. You're not getting that much for your money too. On and on and on and on and on. Okay, all right, fine, 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 fine. This product, in my mind, is more than the sum of its parts. And it goes like this. My listening, my listening portion of the Super 5s. When switching these back and forth, the Compact 7s and the Super 5s, I really, had to, I really had to go deep in the archives of my music. I really had to find some obscure music of mine that really fleshes out those differences. And that brings me to the Zimmer Factor, Batman, The Dark Knight, the movie score, the track, Like a Dog Chasing a Car. When I, when I match the levels up to 95 dB, dB playback, the visceral punch from the Super 5s, the vibratory nature in my room, and how, and how much information was being conveyed to me, how deep the bass was, how much bass quality and bass quantity I was receiving as compared to the as compared to the Compact 7s, I have to ascribe a number for you. And the number is 25%. Now, in most models within the same, within the same product vein, within the same company, generally as you step up and you spend more, you're getting five to 10% more. I'm telling you folks, with the Zimmer test track, with the Zimmer torture test, in my room versus the, sev the Compact 7s, I felt I was getting 25% more of everything with all of the tracks that I was playing, in particular with that song, because there are bass notes, there are, there's a bass line that actually goes sub 30 hertz. And with all the other harvests that I've owned, and with all the other harvests that I've that I've reviewed, there comes a time in the track where it's just hitting those bass notes, and the music disappears. And so for a short period of time, you're thinking there's no more music. It's moving on to the next track. But no, it comes back into focus. So with those other speakers that can't roll that down that low. You don't lose the bass line with the Super 5s. They manage to still keep you going and you still hear the faint roll off, be it very faint, very rolled off into that very low 30 hertz range. But you know the music's still there and you're still following along until it comes back again. The Compact 7s can't do that with that song. The Super 5s did that with like a dog chasing a car. And this is a very important, and this is a very important differentiation in the context of what you're getting for your money, in the context of the Harbeth family. And as an audio video integrator, as my day job, here's the climax and the crescendo of how I would sum up all four speakers. The P3 ESRs, the P3 ESRs are, you are buying a 32 inch curved gaming monitor, say the Samson G8. You are sitting, you are sitting at your desk and you are up close to this 32 inch curved high refresh, 240 hertz refresh rate monitor. Your eyes are being assaulted by the vivid character by the vivid colors, the game refresh rate, and 
just the context of everything that's happening to you, the awesome action scenes, you feel you're really immersed in the event that's happening before you. <clears throat> awesome details, tight pixels, and you're really enjoying yourself in that context. It's a great monitor. It's serving its, serving its purpose with that function. Now, as you step back, like the P3s, the further away you get from the monitor, the more the impact diminishes. The further away you get, it's not that there's a loss of detail. It's not that there's a loss of quality. It's just its size has constraints. And the further, away, the, the further you are away from it, the more that the impact of it is diminished. The Compact 7 ES. This speaker, I feel, is the jack of all trades. It is the Sony 55 inch OLED 4K screen. It's a beautiful screen. You got deep blacks, you got vibrant colors, and it works in every room. It doesn't matter where you place it. You could practically place it in the bathroom. And that screen is going to work everywhere. You're going to love it. And it outperforms most others in its class, bar none. It is a reliable, just again, I'm going to say jack of all trades type of screen. You love it for what it does and you can live with it for a very long time and be happy with what it gives you because it does so much so well you can't fault it for what it is you can't fault it for how it performs at its size and those constraints you put that speaker in a much larger room you put that screen in a much larger room you sit much farther back and again you know, there's some diminishment there. It doesn't mean that there's less quality. It doesn't mean that the screen is any less, there's any less quality with the screen. Just like the 7 Compact. It is a fabulous performer, but you have to understand the context and the limitations of where it's placed. The M30s. Oh boy, the M30s. <laughs> okay, the M30s, yeah. Let's go with the Sony 5000 4K laser. Do you understand the lumens of that laser? It's 2000 lumens. Now, when you introduce a laser projector into a room, you have more work to do. You have to mitigate the light that's entering that room. You have to mitigate how much light's gonna hit the screen. You have to add something like a Screen Innovations black diamond that's going to actually improve the dynamic contrast of the laser projector. It's kind of like adding a JL audio subwoofer to your M30s to fill out that bottom missing portion. You're spending more money. You've got to be more fastidious with the room. There's a lot more preparation that goes into the whole system. But boy, when the lights are off, you've got the right screen, everything's dialed in, you're in love. You're in love with what the presentation is. Every time you go in to use this system, if you've put in all the work, you love what you're getting back. The more work you put into it, the more you're getting back. And that's how I feel the M30s are characterized within the Harbeth catalog. That's why I could see why so many vinyl lovers would love the M would love the M30s. Like Poetry on Plastic. He loves his 30.2s. He's a vinyl lover. I get it. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it, and the more you feel connected with that particular product. Okay. Let's step up. Let's step up to the Super HL5 Plus XDs. What do we have here, folks? This is the Sony. 75 inch mini LED of speakers. A lot more expensive, but my God, wait a minute. It's still a Sony. A lot of the material is the same. A lot of the manufacturing process is the same, has the same house look. But wait, does it perform the same as everything else as all the other Sonys? Of course not. 
Of course it doesn't. You are getting much more vivid colors. You are getting deeper high dynamic contrast ratio. The colors, there's more depth to the colors. There's more of everything that you're experiencing. Those action sequences, they feel more realistic because by way of nature of the larger size of the screen, you feel closer to the action. You feel more immersed with it. You feel like this is more lifelike, right? Now you're starting to see what I'm saying about the Super HL5s. You've got, the, you've got more of everything hitting you and it just, it works so well that you can't go back to the smaller screen. You can't go back to the smaller speakers. I can't afford a 75 inch mini LED Sony. I can't afford these speakers right now. But damn it, I want a mini LED Sony 75 inch. I'm going to save my pennies. Damn it, that's a big screen and it might not fit my room that well, but I don't care. Once I've experienced all that realism, once I've experienced that, that immersion, that's all I can think about moving forward. Let me say it to you this way, folks. How I see the Super HL5s. If I were to hang my hat up tomorrow, if I were to say, I'm done with reviewing, no more videos from two channel listening, I would consolidate my system, all the bits that I have. I would trade in my HL, comp I would trade in my compact sevens and I would buy a pristine used pair of Rosewood finish Super HL5s and I could live for years, happily ever after, reliving all my music over and over and over just like that 75 inch mini LED, even though you've seen that movie five times, you experience it differently on that mini LED, the way I experience my favorite music so much differently with the Super HL5s. The Canton Chrono 90 have big shoes to fill when I move them into this, into this room next week. And for me, that's the rub with working with an $8,000 speaker. It does provide that much more. Alan Shaw, Alan Shaw is able to extract that much more detail, that much more texture, that much more immediacy, that much more intelligibility. Wow. That's all I can say for context. That's what I can say about the Harbeth, the Harbeth lineup. I hope that served you well. I hope you at least can understand that paper specs are only going to get you, even in this case, they're only going to get you 33% of the way because there's so much more that is involved. There's so much more that you have to understand beyond the paper specs, beyond the parts. There's more than just the sum of the parts. So. Deep breath. You can see how emotional and involved I am in trying to describe to you my time with the Super HL5s and how I'm going to sorely miss these speakers when I have to send them back. Because even though I own the Compact 7s, I love the Compact 7s for what they do. While I'm playing the Compact 7s, I'm thinking of the Super HL5s. It's kind of dirty, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Uh, on that note, I appreciate everybody who keeps coming back to Two Channel Listening. I appreciate the support you guys give me. I appreciate the th enthusiasm. And I know I'm a different take. I'm just a, I'm a different vibe. And those of you who stick with me, I do appreciate it. It's what keeps me going. It's what keeps me doing this. And just the fact that I, I love, I love the variety. I love all the different music. I love all the different contexts and textures. And it's just, it's a journey. It's a journey in understanding 
all the different designers out there and that's what makes it fun to 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 uncover what their intentions are and what they're trying to do and that's what makes this so damn fun for me guys you know it's it's i'm not making any money off of this you know i i just had to re-up my editing fees for for what i use and that's really expensive on on an annual subscription so believe me i'm not making anything from this um not that you need to know that but it's just it's just the reality of it i'm a small channel I'm one person, and there's a lot that I have to do to put to put these on. As a matter of fact, I hope you find that the lighting's even better. I just bought a new light. It was expensive. I like it, and I'm running on now. So until next week, thank you so much. Be well to one another. Take care of your families, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.